thank Smith College for being patient. Um, uh, when this started, we made a decision to lengthen this a little bit, uh, which perhaps we should not have done. Uh, it's made them wait. Um, I have not met them personally. Uh, about uh, two weeks ago, they won the COVID-19 challenge uh, with many participants. Smith College is a famous and probably the premier women's college in the United States. Um, I had the pleasure after I learned of this, which was brought to my attention by uh, someone else who pointed out they had won, of evaluating their device. And I'd like to compliment them on having a beautifully documented device. It was very easy for me to evaluate it on my open source spreadsheet. Um, unlike the RespiraWorks uh, system, which uses a blower and the open uh, vent Bristol, which use, is a back squeezer, this is a pressure uh, regulating device. So please take it away, Smith College. Thank you. Hey, thank you so much. Um, we are Smith Vents. Our team comprises of 30 Smith College alumni and friends, many of whom are actually here on the call with us. Our presentation today is going to take the form of a short video with many of our team members' voices woven together. We're happy to take questions at the end of it. Smith Bent is a team of Smith College engineering alumni and friends. We developed our design as part of the COVID-19 challenge, which we recently won. The Smith Vent design was inspired by medical professionals and patients battling COVID-19. It connects to the compressed air and oxygen supply in a hospital and regulates the pressure to provide gentle air delivery to the patient. It is designed to function in both volume control and pressure support modes to cater to different patient needs. Is this supposed to be audio? The clinician is at the heart of our design. We created an intuitive and comprehensive I'm sorry, you can't hear it? We can hear it, Astrid. Okay, I'll it sounds, just It sounds fine one. to me. It sounded okay. just fine to me. This video is also available on YouTube, so if people are having trouble listening, we're happy to put the link in the chat, too. Okay, I think it's just Eric. He's, okay. he's, al oh. he's always an outlier. There's always, <laughs> it's always something. Because some of the audience here is saying they can hear it fine. So could you just okay. continue and Eric can ask any questions about it later. Okay, will do. Sorry about User interface for clinicians to easily recognize anomalies in patient data and quickly change settings as needed. The screen layout leverages clinician familiarity with existing systems to minimize training and onboarding time. Incorporation of both visual and auditory alarms ensures patient safety. The entire design is built on a sophisticated control system that is responsive to clinician settings and patient behavior. The physical system incorporates multiple solenoid valves and a gas mixing reservoir, as well as pressure sensors and flow sensors. Our manufacturing strategy utilizes mainly readily available, off-the-shelf components, which reduces complex machining and supports compatibility with current medical equipment. The enclosure design is user-friendly and easy to clean and maintain. It currently sits on a tabletop, but could be modified to attach to a bed rail. Our full design files and documentation are available online at tinyurl.com slash smithvent. You can contact us at team.smithvent at gmail.com with inquiries and follow our progress on social media on Facebook as smithvent, Twitter as at smith underscore vent, and Instagram as smith underscore vent. We're happy to answer any questions.
Thanks a lot. Yeah. Oh. So, uh, have you followed a formal risk management process to develop this? No, we haven't. So we have not completed any hazard or risk management for this. Um, we have been participating across 10 weeks in the COVID-19 challenge, and we've done testing in accordance with their system requirements. No additional risk management was done. I do want to add, though, that we did review a number of different ISO standards. And so of those, we looked at the biocompatibility and electromagnetic standards, and we used them to guide our design process. But more testing would have to be done on all of them before any sort of patient would be attached to it. So a sort of timeline related question. I feel like that's been my question for most groups. Do you guys have plans to try to um, manufacture your device at this time or work with someone to pick up the manufacturing? So I'll take that. Um, we, so we entered this as part of the COVID-19 challenge. As, as we said, our goal from the beginning was to contribute what we could to the open source community. Uh, and so we documented pretty extensively all the way through. What, because we won the competition, the, the challenge organizers are taking this design forward. Uh, they're working right now with a medical device firm doing a gap analysis for potential manufacturing in Africa. Uh, and they have a number of different partners. They're looking for funding to be able to move this forward. But it's a project that will be easily another six months, I would say, maybe closer to a year, depending on funding. Great, thanks. Um, so you, you mentioned potentially taking that to Africa. Do you have any involvement already with regulators over there or government bodies or anything of that matter? We, we don't, but the, the challenge organizers have a number of different uh, partners that they're working with. And part of the work of this first medical device firm doing the gap analysis is to try to identify what's necessary to move it forward um, with, regula with regulations in Africa. I think they're targeting Nigeria as one of the first countries. But we, have, we have handed off all of our materials. We will stay involved as consultants. Um, we will have a project in my capstone engineering course that builds on some of this a little bit, but really we have, we have handed off our work to others to take forward. We, we never got into this intending to produce ventilators. That was not our goal. Pierre, I have a question if you don't mind. Um, so I, I'm very interested in the patient inflating valve, which exists inside this ventilator, which I think is quite different than the one that Respiroworks uses. The Respiroworks uses a pinch on a flexible tube with cam. And I know that you use a solenoid, but it wasn't obvious for me looking at your design. I didn't spend that much time on it, exactly how that worked. My main interest is in making reusable components because I believe there are other teams that have not yet solved the problem of a, of a reliable and fast patient inflating valve. Um, so uh, Dr. Howard, if I've got it correct, could you or one of your students maybe speak to the patient inflating valve? So if, if I understand your question, Robert, correctly, you're asking about our proportional solenoid valve, which comes after the gas mixing reservoir. Um, our system, as, as hopefully was clear from the video, is using the compressed air uh, in, and oxygen in the hospital setting already. We recognize that's not the case in all hospitals, but that was, that was part of the challenge requirements. And so we started with, with that. Uh, figured that air is already compressed, so let's, let's use that. So that air comes in, gets mixed in the reservoir, uh, and then the heart of the system really is the proportional solenoid valve, which has pretty, pretty sophisticated um, code under, underlying it that is, that is getting information from the sensors, and then knowing when to open and close to be able to get the necessary pressure uh, to the patient. And that is, that is an expensive component. I will absolutely um, admit that. Uh, the whole design right now is about $2,500, and that is about 800 of it, that and its, and its controller. Okay, I, so I'm a little con confused here. I was actually, the, the two ports on the opening there, are those oxygen and air input ports or, or is one of those the output port to the patient and then the expiratory air coming back? Let, let, me, let me show the master system diagram, that will, that will be clearer. Okay, so can you see this? Yes, we can. 
Okay, so uh, we have air and oxygen coming in the back from the wall supply, going through open closed solenoid valves, going into the reservoir, then going through the proportional solenoid valve where we measure both pressure and flow. Then there's a pressure relief valve just to ensure that we don't have too much, too high a pressure going to the patient. Then it goes to the patient um, okay. and comes back and then through another open closed solenoid valve and I'll add out. Right, so it's the open closed one on the right which I would call a patient inflating valve because it's in the expiratory limb and it has to be closed at the time that you open the other, the other valve. I see. It, it, that's a commercial off the shelf solenoid valve. You didn't manufacture it yourself? Correct, we, okay. we did not. This, this, is, this is a commercial one. It's not particularly expensive, maybe $75. Um, this is the one purchased component that we got that, that is not um, medical grade because it's on the expiratory line. And one could look for something that was, but because we were able to not have something medical grade, it does have brass in it, um, and therefore we were able to get it for seventy-five dollars. But it's pretty easy to find. Okay, thank you very much. Back, back over to you, Pierre. Thank you. Um, just regarding your open source license, um, so this is being passed over to a partnering manufacturer. Do you still have the ability to pass it over to someone else or does the fact of passing it to someone close it? So the, the, the design is entirely open source. We've been publicizing material from the very beginning. All of our code is on GitHub. All of our CAD files are on um, uh, uh, GrabCAD and we are not, there are, there are you know, no, no royalties, no IP associated with this. It's, it's something that we have put out there for the community. So even though the challenge is taking it forward, we, we very much hope that somebody else will take, take whatever parts of it they can and, and add on to it. And we have a pretty extensive uh, documentation of future work that we would like to have done if we'd had more time, but we, we, we used our allotted time that we had as a team available. And so now we pass it off to others and hope people will take it forward. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. I'm good in terms of questions. 